Hey guys, welcome back. I am super excited about today's video because we are talking about new fall cozy mysteries. Now when I say new, I'm talking about books that have come out or are coming out this year in 2021 and then obviously set during fall. Um, it's no surprise that I love fall. I love all things autumnal and the changing of the leaves and pumpkin and apple spice, all of that. So um, <laughs> now that summer is finally starting to die down a little bit here, it only takes a little bit. It only takes a taste for me to get all ramped up everything fall related, which is why I couldn't wait to film this video. Um, because again, I'm super excited about all of these upcoming fall cozy mysteries. Um, now I will go ahead and link a video that I did um, I want to say it's probably been over a year, but I do have a video talking about fall books that are already out if you want to check those out um, because some of these books that I'm about to mention at the time that I release this video have not come out yet. So if you're trying to get into the fall spirit and you're waiting for these books to be released, go ahead and check that video out so you can see um, other fall books that you can go ahead and read now if you want to get into that cozy vibe. But um, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about these new books. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with the first book, which is called The Cider Shop Rules. This is book number three in the Cider Shop series. And um, to be honest, this is like the quintessential autumnal cozy mystery. Uh, though I have a feeling I'm probably going to say that about a lot of these books, just because cozy mysteries in general, I feel are just perfect for fall. Don't get me wrong, they're perfect all year round, but something about the fall season, um, it just goes hand in hand with Cozy Mysteries. I don't know, I didn't make that roll up, it's just the way that I feel, and I'm sure if you guys love Cozy Mysteries, you'll totally agree with me. But um, anyway, <laughs> this book is actually already out. It came out towards the end of July, and um, like I mentioned, it is the third book in the Cider Shop series. This one is taking place, I want to say either right before or right after Halloween. So again, we're in the thick of the fall season. Um, side note, all of these books that I'm about to mention happen kind of during that fall span. So right before or around Halloween, spanning all the way till like after Thanksgiving. So really you can start reading these now. If you don't want to read them now, you can wait until like Thanksgiving time. Again, you do you. <laughs> but um, this particular book is taking place during fall, obviously, and um, kind of the main mystery that we're trying to solve is that the town's really like well-known pumpkin farmer, is he a pumpkin farmer? I believe so. <laughs> anyway, he is found dead, and on top of that, his body is actually found in the um, truck of our amateur sleuth. So naturally, she is compelled to figure out the mystery and really the town is kind of looking to her to solve it because they don't want this tragedy to kind of infringe upon all of their autumn festivities and merriment. Next up we have Wreathing Havoc which is book number four in the Gardening Squad mystery series. This book comes out at the end of September and um, really the reason that I put it on this list other than the fact that it's a new upcoming cozy mystery set during fall is because of where specifically it's set which is in Massachusetts. Now, um, obviously there are different cities around the country or around the U.S. that um, kind of have that fall seasonal vibe, but for me there's something like peak fall and just autumnal vibes about the New England area, which obviously Massachusetts is part of. And so I'm super excited about this one, more specifically because of all of the autumnal descriptions. I just feel like having it set in Massachusetts, you're definitely going to get those um, kind of changing of the leaves descriptions and that crisp fall air. Um, because I got to be honest, living in the South, <laughs> we do get the changing of the leaves and like some kind of peak of fall, but we don't really get that crisp air until like mid-December. <laughs> so to read about that in a book is really exciting for me and no doubt going to put me in that fall mood. Now as for what the book is about, um, basically kind of the murder at hand is really our amateur sleuth investigating the murder of a local um, theater owner in the town and so they're trying to figure out kind of what's happening because one of their friends is actually um, 
kind of in the police's line of sight for being the number one suspect. And anytime we have a cozy mystery where the amateur sleuth's friends or families are suspects, the amateur sleuth is compelled to jump in because naturally they want to clear their friend's name. So that's what we're dealing with in this one. But again, I'm super excited about the location specifically. And um, I just can't wait to kind of fall into those New England vibes. I realized I said fall into, that was totally not on purpose, but whatever, pun intended. <laughs> okay, so this next one, I keep repeating myself like a broken record, but I'm also really excited about this one. Um, let me just say when it comes out, which again is the end of September, um, September 28th to be specific, but it's called Mrs. Claus and the Halloween Homicide. And um, I wrote in my notes which book this is. Um, this is number two in the Mrs. Claus series, which as either you're familiar with the series or as you can tell from the title, it really centers around Mrs. Claus, AKA, yes, Santa Claus's wife. And automatically you're thinking that it's Christmas vibes, right? Well, I'm excited about this one because it's like a holiday mashup because while it is set in the North Pole and we've got our main characters of like Santa and his wife, and all of the elves, um, it's actually taking place during Halloween. More specifically, um, Halloween is finally making its appearance to the North Pole, which is weird for them, just as weird as it is for us, the readers, because naturally you're thinking it's nothing but Christmas cheer all year round. <laughs> But anyway, the townspeople are actually trying to get excited and amped up for it, at least some of the townspeople, because not everyone is excited about it. And what ends up happening is that one of the town's local elves ends up being murdered, um, which first of all, I feel like it's so weird to even associate Christmas and North Pole with tragedy and murder, but I'm going to look past that because it's a cozy mystery. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's up to Mrs. Claus to um, investigate and figure it out. And on top of that, um, because not all of the like elves and town people are down for Halloween coming to their Christmassy town, there's all of these like weird and scary happenings. Um, happening <laughs> throughout the town which is just really ominous and yeah this one seems like a fun one again because it's this interesting mashup um you've got the fall more specifically halloween and then naturally it's kind of set in a very christmasy town so um full disclosure i've never actually read the first book but i'm gonna dive right into this one because it is set during fall and i'm really interested to see how the author plays up this halloween slash christmas mashup Okay, so this next one is actually called Murder Outside the Lines, and it's book number three in the pen and ink series. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flash the cover now like I always do, but I was so excited when I saw this one had a new book coming out because I remember buying either the first book or the second book in the series strictly because of the cover. I had no idea what the book was about. I mean, I knew it was a cozy mystery, but um, the cover alone is what got me because it was this coloring book kind of fill it in yourself style, which I thought was so creative and adorable. Um, usually I probably would have just immediately ordered a book off of Kindle if I wanted to read it right away, but this one I specifically ordered the physical copy just so that I can have it in hand because the cover was just that good. So now that we have a new version coming out, I'm really excited, especially because it's set during fall. Um, more specifically, this is a premise which I think is super interesting, um, especially kind of given the like Halloween spoopy vibes um, so what we've got is the amateur sleuth which is the books the bookstore owner I believe the name of her shop is color me red um, R E A D obviously we've got to have our puns in there but anyway um, because of this like Halloween season she has a psychic come to the bookstore to do a reading um, which is supposed to be like kind of all in fun or whatever but the psychic actually ends up having a vision about seeing some kind of like corpse or dead body um, more specifically I think like a foot poking out somewhere and um, for some reason, it's that ominous to where they actually want to get the police involved. Um, the only problem is when the police go to the spot that the psychic kind of foreshadowed or predicted, there's nothing there. Um, so naturally, they kind of like brush it off. But then the psychic has like another vision, excuse me, and I think that one, um, it's super ominous and I don't know if it like comes true, but it's very detailed in a way to where our amateur sleuth really actually starts to take stock into what this psychic is saying. So um, yeah, I gotta be honest. I really think that it's 
um, an interesting premise because, um, you know, with these kind of like Halloween cozy mysteries, you can really go a, f a few different ways about it. But interestingly enough, I've never read a kind of Halloween um, cozy mystery that has a psychic involved, though I have separately read cozy mysteries that have witches and psychics. Um, but anyway, this is another kind of interesting premise slash mashup. Um, and I gotta be honest, when I was reading the description, it seemed a little creepy to me. I don't know, it could just be the kind of frame of mind that I'm in, but um, if this is in fact a little bit um, more intense than typical cozy mysteries, that will definitely be something interesting, simply because, again, cozy mysteries are supposed to be light and fun, not all the time, but the ones that tend to lean a little bit darker always kind of throw me off in the best kind of way because I'm not expecting it. So um, if I read it, I will definitely report back to you guys uh, because again, that's something that caught my attention. I mean, obviously the cover as well, which I absolutely love, <laughs> but also the fact that it could be a little bit more um, menacing, I guess, than your typical cozy mysteries, you know? Okay, so this next one is actually another apple cider themed cozy mystery, which I'm all for because I mean, apple cider is quintessential fall, am I right? So this one is actually called Death by Apple Cider and it is book number nine in the Bookstore Cafe Mystery Series. Um, I think this one actually comes out a little bit later than the previous books that I've mentioned. This one actually comes out at the end of October rather than September, but that's perfect because this one actually takes place um, leading up to Thanksgiving. So it's not like you're gonna kind of be late or anything if you pick this up. Um, on the release date. But the premise behind this one is that we've got our amateur sleuth who obviously, judging by the title of the series, owns a bookstore. She actually teams up with her town's local library to host this um, kind of autumn uh, fair or what have you and one of the games that they have there is bobbing for apples which is something we're all familiar with um, however the mystery kicks in uh, because one of the patrons um, you know it's always some random person <laughs> but one of the patrons like six her head in to play the game to bob for apples but they don't come back up or rather they do come back up but they come back up dead so naturally that like kicks things off um, into our mystery aspect but I'm really interested in this one because it also takes place in the northern section I believe it's set in Ohio um, now obviously that's not New England but again anything that's not in the south they're automatically gonna get more autumnal weather than what I'm used to <laughs> and so I'm super interested to kind of like cozy up with those settings Things because it's going to be cooler and crisper air and I think the um, idea of like an autumnal event in general is super fun um, out of all of the like cozy mysteries that I've read with these activities surprisingly I haven't seen a lot with like bobbing for apples so the fact that that's incorporated into the actual murder is definitely something um, that I'm curious to read about last up we have to the tome of murder and this one also comes out at the end of October so you've got some time to like add it to your TBR or rather um, kick off a few other books <laughs> on your fall list to read so that you're not jamming them all in a small period of time but anyway this is book number seven in the Beyond Page bookstore mystery series and um, this one is interesting because it's kind of twofold you've got your actual murder um, and in this case I believe um, oh okay so this one actually hits close to home because um, the amateur sleuth our heroine it's her cousin's boyfriend who ends up being murdered so obviously you've got some um, intent for her to really be compelled to solve the mystery but on top of that it's kind of like a double-edged thing because you've got that murder happening and then the other mystery is the fact that there are um, books or at least one specific vintage book that has gone missing and as we all know if you are a fan of cozy mysteries or the bookish cozy mysteries we all know that um, rare books are a big deal and when they go missing it's just as um, a big of a deal as jewelry because they can really be valuable so I'm interested in that aspect obviously we know cozy mysteries are gonna have murder which is why I'm actually more interested in kind of like figuring out where the missing rare books have gone <laughs> just because that's something that is specifically unique to this series and again I love bookish cozy mysteries in general in fact I did an entire video talking about bookish cozy mysteries um, 
now that I'm talking out loud, I could probably do like a part two because so many new good ones have come out and it would be remiss of me not to talk them up because I love them so much. But anyway, <laughs> this one is definitely something that I'm interested in. And again, it comes out um, in October because I believe the actual book is set around Thanksgiving era. So um, you're not actually having to rush out and buy it now. You can read a few of the other books, take a break or like get into your Halloween and then casually roll over into your Thanksgiving themed ones. Okay, so there you have it, a handful of new upcoming fall cozy mysteries. I'm excited about all of these. Um, as you guys know, if you've been around my channel or if you follow me on Instagram, I haven't actually been doing too much reading like I usually do, but something about um, the fall because it's my favorite season and everything, I'm really getting excited and I'm hoping that I can knock a few of these books off of my TBR and really get into them because again, I love everything fall and now with a little one, I feel like I can re-experience it or rather experience it in a way that I um, have never done it before just because I've got little ones to have like view things through their point of view even though she's like super tiny is not gonna remember this but it's given me an excuse to like go to pumpkin patches and apple picking and like don't even get me started about baby's first Halloween outfit because I've got like an entire Pinterest board of ideas and let's just say follow me on Instagram to keep an eye out for what I end up dressing her up as because I'm super excited about it so Anyway, um, let me know if you have read any of these, if you were lucky enough to get an advanced copy, or um, if you end up finding this video late or you revisit it, let me know if you ended up reading any of these, and if so, what you thought about it. Um, if you like this video, please, um, you know, like and subscribe. Happy reading, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!